good evening ladies and gentlemen uh, namaste and welcome <clears throat> i had a i had a little bit of a script to start the sort of event but looking at this spontaneous welcome for a very popular and beloved leader i am tempted to share a little bit of a conversation that i had with uh, a former dean uh, ajit rangneka just a few seconds ago uh, in his typical style he said oi hall bhar gaya hai so he said when was the last time this was this full i said maybe 10 years ago or 11 years ago and the reason is exactly on this day that is 16th of december 2011 shri chandra babu naidu garu was here he was here for isb's 10th year celebrations and uh, it's only befitting that we have here him here with us on the 20th year celebrations uh we are here to celebrate a very special occasion a very special occasion uh, in the journey of an institution the indian school of business uh what started as an audacious dream in the late 90s is today an institute of international repute uh an institute that is now increasingly known for india relevance but global rigor isb we have celebrated isb's 20 years uh, of existence uh, technically this was to be the year before but i guess all of us will understand and agree that covid years can be cancelled without any sort of hesitation right so therefore we st we started the celebrations in 22 uh we were very fortunate to have the prime minister of india uh, kick start the 20th year celebrations here in this campus on 26th of may 2022 when he was the chief guest for our graduation ceremony for the class of 2022 uh subsequently we've had a series of global events uh <clears throat> in uh, london berlin singapore new york and today we gather for the valedictory ceremony of the 20th year celebrations this is in some sense the signaling the end of celebrations but in on you know in many case, uh, sort of on many friends it's actually the continuation of a remarkable journey uh, i'm i'm sort of compelled to say that chandra babu naidu garu needs no introduction but i think uh, it's important to mention is many connections to the isb uh, there are many connections and everyone will have their own story and i'm sure there will be some stories that will come out uh, over the next few uh, few minutes but i'm compelled to say one thing that i think uh, you know what's the strongest connection that uh, chandra babu naidu garu has uh, to isb and that is that he found us a home he found us a home here in hyderabad in the then state of andhra pradesh and that's sort of legendary right i mean there are many stories uh, you know in terms of how we invited and sort of wooed the board uh, much before this was a very sort of fashionable thing to do in terms of going to davos and stuff like that he did it in his own unassuming way here and he chose to have an academic institution as an anchor investor in what is today a very thriving part of the city gachiboli but i think what we should be eternally grateful to uh, naidu garu is not just if he found a home for us here in the city but he through his actions and his support in the early years and something that he continues to even to this day found us a home in the hearts of lakhs of hyderabadis and i want to thank all of you from the hyderabad community who are here because <laughs> because it's it's his action his signal that sort of got us to where we are today uh i did mention that today is december 16th uh we were just as he came in we took him to the site of the you know tree that he planted 11 years ago on your way out if you just look to the left you will find a tall tree that's grown fully that was the tree that he planted few years ago exactly on this day and i guess like many things that you have done sir this tree is also in full bloom and growth thank you very much today is also <laughs> today is also day 1 of solstice our uh, very very popular annual alumni reunion and we have uh, alums from around the world here so a very special welcome to all of you and your families uh, welcome back home uh, we also have with us on stage uh, dr pramath raj sinha who uh, <coughs> I think it's safe to say that's the founding class sort of signaling their strongest commitment and sub connect. Yeah. 
of the 128 pioneers who sort of, you know, took this leap of faith of joining an institution which was in its very first year. It's very, it's a matter of great pride that we have close to half of them here over this weekend. So thank you very much, all of you. Uh, last month when we had this event in New York, uh, our founding chairman, uh, Rajat Gupta, in his speech, sort of said a lot of nice things. And just when he ended, he said, uh, because there were people thanking him for what he has done in terms of ISB, et cetera, he said, probably my most seminal contribution to ISB is to have got Pramat Sinha as the founding dean. So Pramat, I don't think we'll disagree. Thank you. I also want to sort of welcome our board members, uh, G.V. Prasad and Srini Raju, uh, some of our other, you know, senior leaders from the industry, Dr. B.V.R. Mondredi and others from Hyderabad community, our faculty, students, staff, friends of ISB from the city of Hyderabad, and all those of you who are joining online as well. Uh, we have a short movie uh, that we're going to play now for you. It's a four-minute movie, and then after that, we'll continue with the rest of the proceedings. Thank you. Can we have the movie, please? <laughs>
Thank you very much. Uh, there was a little bit of a technical glitch. Not many of you would have noticed. There was uh, the voiceover of the Prime Minister and the Dean, uh, but we can't invite the Prime Minister to repeat what he said, but I think we can invite the Dean to sort of repeat and elaborate what he said on uh, screen. So I'm now going to invite uh, Dean Madan Pilutla to share a few words. Good evening, all. Uh, I'd, like, I'd like to just begin by uh, thanking uh, uh, Chandrababu Naidu Garum. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for graciously accepting our invitation. Uh, I can't think of a more uh, fitting finale uh, to the celebration that we have, uh, the 20th year celebration of the school, uh, than uh, with your presence here uh, in, on campus. Uh, singularly responsible uh, for uh, bringing uh, ISB to, uh, to Hyderabad uh, and uh, all of the support that you've given in the early years uh, has resulted in the school uh, in the shape that it is, uh, it is today. Uh, and just to repeat, right, I know this, is, uh, this kind of an analogy seems very, uh, a very odd thing to do, but you go out there and you see the tree uh, that uh, Chadrababu Naidu Garu has planted, uh, one of the healthiest trees that we see on campus. Uh, we took him there, we showed it to him, and we said, uh, you, you are, we, we hope you're just as proud of, of us as an institution, an institution that you have, uh, have brought into this, uh, into this city, uh, and uh, we hope that you will agree that uh, the institution is just as brilliant as, as this wonderful tree that, uh, that you planted for us about uh, 10 years ago. Uh, and he, he very graciously he said, you know, great memories, the school has become a really, really great school. But he also told me, he said, why are you only aiming to be in the top 10? You should be the top school in the world. You know? <laughs> so uh, uh, top 10 is a, is a big ambition for us. Uh, now uh, we have a, a brand new ambition, which is a, uh, being the top school in the world. Uh, but we accept the challenge, sir. We'll go for that. You know? So that is something that we absolutely plan to do. So um, uh, a, a warm welcome also uh, to uh, all of the different reunion batches uh, and the founding batch uh, that, uh, that was there. Um, the founding batch always gets uh, special love and affection uh, in ISB. Uh, they don't like uh, any, when, when people in, uh, in other batches, they say I'm the founding batch of other programs, uh, they claim no, we are the founding batch. So yes, you are the founding batch. Uh, welcome back, uh, welcome back to, uh, to the campus. Um, I, I just want to give a very, very brief update about the school itself, right? So uh, uh, to the alumni, the school belongs to you. Uh, to the uh, community in, uh, in uh, Hyderabad who embraced us, uh, also the community in Mohali who embraced us, uh, the school does belong to the communities in, uh, that we live in. So this is your school. And uh, I, I want to summarize, a very just say one thing. Your school is in great shape. I mean, it, it is in absolutely great shape. Uh, we have a wonderful set of faculty. Uh, we, by, by any set of accounts, we are the top uh, research, um, uh, the, the top research doing faculty that, uh, in India. Uh, but that's not a metric that we are aiming for. We want to be among the very top in the world. Uh, while we are right now at this point by metrics, different metrics that people pick, uh, we will be among the top 100, uh, 100 schools in the world which might not sound impressive to you, but for a school that is just 20 years old and which decided to hire its own faculty and build a faculty base, uh, it's a pretty impressive accomplishment. Uh, so what I want to tell you is uh, that the distinguished faculty that we have, uh, what we've given them the challenge right now is to say that you're doing world-beating research, absolutely brilliant, really, really good, but now we want you to do India-relevant research that is also globally respected. So it is going to be global, it is going to be the research that is published in the top journals, but it will be addressing uh, issues that face the Indian economy, the Indian polity, Indian businesses and so on. So India relevant research that is globally respected is the way that... Uh, that 
The second kind of a reason that the school was set up, uh, so one was we, there was there was a felt need to have a research-based business school in India. A second reason the school was set up is to say that we are going to be the provider of talent to the world, managerial talent to the world. I think we've done a fantastic job. Uh, so we have 13,500 plus alumni. Uh, a lot of them are there in India, uh, but uh, quite a few of them are in other parts in the world. You know, so when you go to uh, when you go to places like New York or Seattle or London or Singapore or Dubai, you see a whole bunch of our our students there, and they're they're really adding a lot of value uh, to the companies that are that are out there. So. Again, you know, so we, we fulfilled some of the ambitions that were there, but there is a long way to go. So the school is going to recommit itself to providing talent, managerial talent for the rest of the world. The third thing that the school has done and done really well, you saw, we have a large, large number of our own people who go and start companies. Uh, and that, that's, a, that's a big need in India. So when we think about the employment needs that are there, and there in India, we think about the number of people that we can educate. If the people that we educate and we inspire, they go out and start companies and they start employing a lot of people, then that's a very important problem that they are solving in India. So we are delighted that we as a school are among the leaders in producing entrepreneurs in the world. Some of those have also become unicorns, but we're very proud of all of, all of our students who've gone on to build businesses everywhere. So we've recommitted ourselves, just like we've recommitted ourselves to the notion of doing research that is relevant, providing talent to the world, we've also recommitted ourselves to the mission of becoming the place or like the central kind of a uh, a node in a network that is going to inspire entrepreneurs in the rest of the world. So, in the, in the rest of India. Uh, so, we would like to become the node. We, we want to build partnerships with institutions in Hyderabad, in, uh, in Punjab, uh, and, and also in other parts of, of India, because we know that we can't do it on our own. But what we can do is, thanks to the fact that we learned how to build partnerships, we built par we, when we started, we started with international partnerships, but we are thinking of building, or we are building at this point in time, lots of partnerships with educational institutions and other governmental bodies, like T-Hub, for example. We want to build those kind of relationships so that we become the repository of anything that is about entrepreneurship education in this country. So that is the third goal that, that we've set for ourselves. We've done well, but we're going to do even better there. The final thing I want to tell you is that in terms of rankings, the school has done really well in international rankings. So we tend to dominate, as an Indian school, we tend to dominate those rankings. Uh, but then when the board, you know, at the time that when I came in, uh, I, I thought that we were doing pretty well. But the board, very rightly, they told me that the ambitions that we have for ourselves, given the social capital, the intellectual capital, and the physical capital that the school has, they said that the goal has to be top 10. I agreed to that ambitious goal, you know, so any ranking that is going to be coming out, we said that that is a goal that we will go for, you know, that is something that we will aim for. But today I've just realized that that goal has been revised upward for me. Uh, it's going to be the top school in the world. We'll try, is all that I can say. <laughs> With that, uh, I'll again, I'll warmly, I'll, I'll welcome uh, Chandra Babu Naidu Garu uh, and Pramath. Uh, I agree. Uh, I actually ag agree with, uh, with Rajat. The singular gift that he gave to the school was uh, Pramath. Uh, and Pramath, as the founding dean of the school, uh, no, no better people, no better two people that, uh, that we can think of uh, to have a conversation. And I think it's going to be a freewheeling conversation, some of it nostalgic, that the founding batch will enjoy, but I'm sure that the rest will too. So a warm welcome to all of you, uh, and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madan. Uh, Pramad, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir, for coming. Uh, it's 20 years uh, of the ISB, but uh, my association with Sri Chandrababu Naidu goes back 25 years. And I may not have actually told this story to a lot of people because there's a bit of nepotism in this story at some point. Uh, I was working for McKinsey and Company and I was in Toronto and I got a call from the India office managing director Ranjit Pandit and he said that there's a request from the chief minister's office. The principal secretary uh, to the chief minister Randeep Sudan would like McKinsey to come and meet the chief minister 
and you have to come back. I had just moved back to Toronto. I was originally there. I had come to India, worked in Malaysia, and then gone back. And I said, but you know, with governments and with chief ministers, you, these conversations happen. Nothing comes out of all this. <laughs> it's going to be a. <laughs> it's going to be a waste of my time. And he said, no, it looks like this gentleman is very serious. So I said, why are you saying that he's serious? He said, no. Uh, and of course, uh, sir, you had uh, been newly uh, crowned as the chief minister. So he had taken a delegation to Malaysia. Uh, and the idea was to learn from Malaysia about how to build a knowledge economy, uh, how to build a digital economy uh, in Andhra Pradesh. And when he went there, pr uh, Prime Minister Mahathir Mohammed at that time, who was the host, told him, why don't you get a Malaysia, I've done a Malaysia Vision 2020. Uh, and that's what you should do uh, in Andhra Pradesh as well. And uh, so he said, uh, how do I do this Vision 2020? And he said, oh, I'm using McKinsey. And by the way, there is this Indian guy who's the project manager. Turns out I was that Indian guy who was the project manager. Uh, and so I came back all the way to make a presentation of course, the typical consultant presentation, talking big things about what we could do for the state. Uh, but the next thing we knew, McKinsey was hired. And that actually changed into a continuous relationship of, uh, I don't know, sir, till the bifurcation of the state in, in Telangana. And then when Andhra, of course, again, it has, and it has continued till today, the McKinsey Association petered off somewhere. So I'm extremely, extremely uh, emotional every time I am on the stage with this person because for me, he's an absolute role model. And, and I've, seen, I've seen many political leaders. One, he's cut from a different cloth. And two, uh, he's just somebody who deserves all the respect that uh, we can give. So I just want to, I just want to say that I, one of the things that I feel gifted about is, is my association uh, with him that happened all these years ago. Sir, today, how do you feel? How do you feel today? No, I'm so happy by seeing all of them. <laughs> they are the future leaders. At that time, I wanted to prepare vision for Andhra Pradesh. That is where Mahathir recommended your name. Our Indian guy is doing. That's how I call you. At that time, everybody said, what is vision <laughs> in India? <laughs> then some of my critics always used to heckle me by saying 420, not vision 2020. If you see today, what all we have visualized on that day, it has transformed in Hyderabad and also in Telangana state. <laughs> After bifurcation, we had a vision 2029. These two states, we wanted to make one and two states in the country itself as a model states. Now, again, this forum, I wanted to discuss with all of you. 20 years time, one year because of COVID, all these things, but 20 years time, ISB has grown. Just like 10 years back, I planted one tree. It is a big tree today. Same thing, ISB has grown. If you see all of you, 25 years back, this area is totally barren land. At that time in Hyderabad, so much of land and no development. This area, only central university, only one university. One day, I came to know national games are going to conduct in India, that year, every year event, or two years once. 
Then I wanted to call immediately the president. I requested him, I am the host, I will do everything for you. Why can't you come and set, oh, conduct your national games? That is how conducting national games is one event, but I, con I constructed a city itself, Gachiboli, for national games. Next to you. <laughs> then Afro Asian Games has come, World Military Games has come. Because of our cap capacity, they gave for Commonwealth Games. Somehow, we didn't conduct well that games. Even 2002-03, at that time, both President of India and Prime Minister announced Olympic Games for India. Still, it is due. That is one thing we have to work it out. Same thing, this area, if you see, Microsoft. That Microsoft, at that time, internet revolution has come. Reason is Bill Gates. I visualized future only information technology. Then I wanted to meet him. Yes, in Delhi. You are uh, following all these things at the time in Delhi. He refused to meet me. I don't have any work with politician. Yeah. Then I told him, I am having some work. I want to meet you. <laughs> then he said, uh, join in a cocktail party and explain. Then I said, I may get negative image because I am also in that uh, group where cocktail party means you are all aware how Indians will conceive. <laughs> so I politely refused. And then I asked him, 10 minutes time you give me. With great difficulty, I got appointment. Then I spent 45 minutes with him. I showed my vision and also PowerPoint presentation. He was totally impressed. Politician is giving PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> Even my own professionals are not in a position to give. That is a new technology, new time. Then he said, what can I do for you? I told one thing. I am not expecting anything from you. You have to understand the strength of India. Indians are very strong in mathematics by birth, by legacies. British people left English to us. Everything they have taken including Kohenur <laughs> diamond. <laughs> but <laughs> they left English to us. We are unable to take. These two are deadly combination for information technology. <laughs> then Bill Gates told me, you are 100% right. India's strength is this. Uh, what can I do particularly for you? Then I told you nothing. You start your Microsoft in Hyderabad Development Center. Then he said, very difficult. I never imagined this question. Anyway, we'll try, but I cannot promise. Then all the way I went to his Seattle. office, yeah. Seattle. Seattle. Then we had a press conference. Only to get Microsoft, I made friendship with him. <laughs> wherever, wherever he go, I used to go. My goal is very clear. I have to get Microsoft to Hyderabad. Then automatically all companies will come to Hyderabad. That is my idea. To promote at that time, you see iTech City. With great difficulty, brainstorming sessions, finally we constructed iTech City. That also very interesting project. Then finally, 14 days I went to America I met all corporate giants to sensitize them India's strength and information technology. Even I'm very happy before me, Prasad Reddy is here at that time. He also came, all so many entrepreneurs, and also Sen Raju, and also Raju, Indukur Raju, like that. That is how Microsoft has come. One day he telephoned to me, yes, what all you requested us, first time, Microsoft Development Center, we are going to start Hyderabad. Because of that center now, CEO of Microsoft is from <laughs> You see, how things have happened, that is how. Then if you can go further, 
Insurance Regulatory Authority, Financial District, next to you. I wanted to bring financial, I want to set up financial hub. Bombay was very popular. Then I, how to do it? I got in touch with Chairman IRDA, Rangachari. He, is, he was searching for land. Nobody is willing to give, even in Delhi or other areas. Then I asked him, I will give you a land, everything for you. Can you come? Then I said, it is a very good idea, but how to convince Prime Minister? I will talk to him. You say, don't, no objection, he say, I will get it. Then PM, we had a meeting. Then PM told me, by seeing all these things, one day you will tell, make Hyderabad as capital. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said at that time, sir, I'm not so greedy. Anyway, from the beginning, Hyderabad is a summer capital for president of India also. I'm not asking. We will develop. Why can't you consider? Finally, he accepted. That is how financial district has come. Then with all these things, you are all stressed, everything. I want to bring Brahma Kumaris here. Next to the Spiritual Institution of Excellence. If you see all these things, this institute, you know very well how we brought it. Five Fortune 500 companies wanted to start one business school, ISB, by that time they formed. One fine morning, my secretary came to me, as usual. Sir, um, they are starting, but they are not shortlisting Hyderabad, only three cities, Mumbai, Bangalore, and Chennai. Then I called him, he was with us. From a, from That's Senate. the nepotism part. Hmm? <laughs> he wrote letters, all these things. Then, I requested them first to come here. They said, no, no, we don't have any agenda on Hyderabad. We are not considering Hyderabad is not the place. Then I told him, OK, first of all, I have to convince them, no, I have to satisfy their ego. <laughs> because you are all business uh, school students. How to convince all these things, why I'm saying, we should not give hope. If I should have given hope, I should not have developed this area and Hyderabad. That is where I am telling all student, uh, business managers here. Then I request them, okay, forget about it. Anyway, you are going to different cities. Come to Hyderabad, have a cup of coffee. Then you decide. <laughs> I know if they come to Hyderabad, they cannot say no to me. <laughs> I am aware, I will convince them. That is what I am saying, my approach is convincing them. Then they came. No, sir, you wrote uh, letters to every board member. Yeah, signed all, letter. All, your, that is your management. <laughs> then we wrote letter to all members who are all in the board. Then we sent ministers, five, six ministers, and also luxury bus to airport. Yeah, that rat. <laughs> Then we received them. They came. I went all the way down. And then I gave bouquets and shawl. And, and garlanded Garlanding yes. everything I had done. I was also garlanded by you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I served the breakfast by giving every person plate and yeah. everything I served. Sir was actually serving breakfast to us. We were all made to sit down. Then by doing all these things, they are prepared mentally. <laughs> then we had a meeting. I gave my presentation. Microsoft presentation. My <laughs> Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> then I told them one thing. Sir, sir, the presentation was entitled Hyderabad, the future knowledge hub yes. of the world. Yes. That is the title we have given. <laughs> Don't see today Hyderabad. See tomorrow Hyderabad. That is the vision I gave them. Then uh, by seeing all these things, they said, what you will give? Uh, it is a business school and also charity. NG 
okay, no loss, no profit organization, what is your uh, offer? Then I said, don't uh, negotiate, go to three places, they will give some incentives or some disincentives, I don't know. Make it plus what all you want, send it to me, I will accept, no negotiations. <laughs> then they went to Mumbai, different experience of reservations. They went to Bangalore, there was a problem, you know, you can recollect. Yes, sir, I can. <laughs> sir, actually what happened was that they got very offended <laughs> that we were late. Yeah. And you had purposely made us late. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were on a flight, we were on an aircraft, we were stopping in Hyder Bombay, Hyderabad, Bangalore, Chennai. Yeah. So, sorry. Sir. <laughs> then Chennai, different experience. No, Chennai, sir, the chief minister <laughs> wanted us to garland her. <laughs> you are there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to tell all these things. Because I am the party for all these things. I don't want to be little them. No, no, I'm also not naming anybody. Sir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good. That is how we brought business school to Hyderabad to this place. Today I am very proud by seeing the premises. If they should have gone to other place, not this type of site. They may, they may have given some far away, but not no, this sir, the Bangalore of... site was next to a auto, Toyota auto factory. Yeah. So we immediately <laughs> rejected it. Yeah. And in Chennai, sir, they said there's a lake. Then we went there, we kept going, we kept going, we kept going, <laughs> we couldn't see the lake. And by then our shoes and our ankles were covered with marshy mud and land and that, that killed Chennai also, sir. But yeah. of course the garlanding made the big difference. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sorry. in this world, everybody is having ego problem. How to tickle that ego is important, <laughs> as business persons for all of you. Even they may be country heads or corporate giants or your ISB or faculty members, great institutions, finally they are all human beings. How to handle them? interpersonal relations, give respect and take respect is very important. That is what I, we have done from the beginning. That is how we treated entrepreneurs in Andhra Pradesh. Today, we are proud to say, at one stage, entrepreneurs means entrepreneurs. That was a very popular slogan also. In this background, I wanted to challenge all of you. I asked your dean, he told me top 10 in the world. It is not acceptable for me as an <laughs> initiator of this institute. Why I am saying everything is possible. We are in the age of beginning of infinity. You imagine something, you can achieve it. 25 years back Hyderabad, Today, Hyderabad, you have to compare. One is infrastructure, one is knowledge economy. We started IT, first IT tech building. Then, so many companies we have brought. Then, we went to biotechnology, biotechnology park, Genome Valley. Because of Genome Valley, so many companies have come. Recently, COVID vaccine has been manufactured in Genome Valley, first of its kind in India, we are proud of it. We are ready for that. Then pharma, how things will happen? I want to go in a big way pharma, at that time Mumbai concentration. Then Export Council was there, they requested an association 5 crores, they requested Maharashtra government, they refused to give 5 crores. Somebody told me, if you give five crores, export council headquarters, they will bring it to Hyderabad. Immediately I accepted, I gave five crores. That is how export council has come to Hyderabad and pharma. Today on pharma means Andhra entrepreneurs, they are doing extremely well. That is our financial district. If you see our outer ring road, 162 kilometers, 
no other city is having. Our airport, one of the best airport. Even greenery, I am very happy, the culture. And one day we used to plant four to five lakh trees as a momentum. Today, I am proud to say all my successors has continued all policies except one or two deviations today that is the result of Hyderabad. Green Global Award for Green Cover has come to Hyderabad. This is where continuation of policies and continue all these things will happen. Here I am proposing before you all, you are seeing success story. You are seeing ISB as an example. Even G20 countries conference, all political parties meeting, I proposed one thing. We are very fortunate Nobody can beat on information technology or digital technology as on today. That is the biggest uh, advantage for Indian. Fortunately, India is blessed demographic dividend. Today, either in India or all over the world, things are happening positively because of youth, because of youngsters. It is happening today. With this two advantages. I, I am saying another thing. China, because of one child policy, now they are facing problem of aging. Even all countries we see, Japan, Europe, all these things. So I am proposing demographic management from now onwards. <laughs> you are all thinking, 25 years is talking, and uh, what for all these things? Even at that time, so many people heckled me or uh, how it is possible. We are temporary. Country is permanent. Society is permanent. <laughs> That's why even recently I requested that meeting. Prepare India at 100 years independence. India will be number one or two economies globally. It is going to happen, you write down as on today. I told Pramod Sinha also. Second, 25 years back, we started information technology. They got employment here. Then they migrated all over the world. Around 32 million or 50, 40, 50 million people have gone. If you see any country today, you get the data. Highest per capita income are Indians. Among Indians, one third minimum, 33% are Telugu people. First mover advantage. <laughs> it is on record. How all these things happen? Even in America, Indians per capita income $1,29,000. Native Americans per capita income $64,000. You can imagine now, that is the strength of Indians. Now my vision for India, 2047. Indians will be the wealth creators globally, richest community and also job providers, creators for the global community, and also public governance and corporate governance, Indians are going to dominate. You keep it in mind. This is going to happen. Their ISB is going to, is going to play a major role. Not 10th rank or below 10. Either <laughs> 1, 2, 3. You have to keep it in mind. It is possible. So what I'm saying, all these things, visualize. Visualize and audit your strengths. And you have to move forward. Everything is possible. That is where I'm saying Indians will be great. India will be great, provided all of us will work together. It is going to happen. So I'm requesting all youngsters, 
you can write down the date what I am saying. After hour of the 100 year celebration, at the time ISB will be 46 years, you can uh, compare. So how to plan it, how to contribute, it is with you, all youngsters, business leaders. This is where if you accept, you can tell me. There, another thing. It is Global Village, after information technology. Now, every citizen is a global citizen. The role of Indians in the global village. India is having a family, one of the best asset. You name anything, support, security, or uh, happiness, stress barrister, everything. Now with all these things, what I'm thinking, wealth creation is inevitable. There is a poverty. How to bridge welfare and development, always we have to move, empowering the citizens. How to reduce the inequalities is the question mark. There, all business brains has to work in that direction. Then only we will be happy. Or otherwise, only few people will have all wealth. Most of the people are suffering with basic minimum necessities. That is not good for the country or for the society. So this is the one thing. Now, you uh, challenge me because 25 years back you worked with me. Both of our responsible. Is it possible? Sir, who am I to challenge you? I'm with you. <laughs> we are all with you. Thank uh, you. But this is a, it's a, uh, no, I personally think that it's a great call to action uh, for our youth al alumni who are here. Uh, and uh, given that this is the last event of this 20 year celebration, uh, I think we should check in at the 25th year and the 30th year and we should follow. Uh, the progress on this. I think the, what you are saying in a microcosm is already true for a lot of ISB graduates. One, they are already working on the intersection of technology and society business, which is your point about digital technology transformation. Uh, they are, most of them are global citizens. In fact, uh, you know, when I was uh, growing up, sir, if you went to work abroad, you had to go and study abroad. First you had to go get a degree, then people would employ you. Now, ISB graduates have gone on to top corporations around the world uh, and are working at very senior levels, designing many of the products and technologies that we use by going straight with an ISB degree. Uh, well, we don't, we are still blacklisted, we are not a degree. Uh, <laughs> but I think that has been very powerful, sir. And uh, I think we are a family. Uh, your point about the family unit, I think the alumni group here yeah. uh, is one of the most powerful uh, family units that uh, you know it goes beyond the traditional family. Yeah. The founders, the faculty, the alumni is a very strong unit. Yeah. And I'm sure you feel the warmth when you come yeah, to yeah. campus. So I think uh, some of this is already coming true. So I have no doubt in my mind with what you are saying. And as far as the economic and wealth creation is concerned, you're right, that will happen. But a lot of our ISB students are also going back to the point you made about uh, bridging the gap. Uh, several of them are now working on solving for inequity. Uh, and your call to action, I'm sure, will spread to a lot of people. I want to go back, sir, to the early days again. Uh, and for many people here who, who may not know, uh, after that initial presentation, uh, you have played a big role in many hurdles that, in, in clearly clearing many of the hurdles. So the first thing that happened was that, uh, you know, he talked about X plus one. So somewhere we were getting some, whatever, 150, 200 acres of land. So we got 250 acres uh, that sir made available here. Uh, so everything was better incentive, but then what happened was that there were a bunch of PILs against this uh, initiative. Yeah. So I remember that uh, 
sir called me up and he said that our attorney general will work with you to make a case that this is in public interest and uh, you were personally there to brief us to make sure that uh, all those cases went all the way to the supreme court yeah and got sorted out but the government and his machinery really supported it it was not just saying okay now come and fend for yourself which is typically what happens uh, so that was one big thing i don't know if you remember sir then uh, once we started building the campus uh, the uh, electric supply was not uh, coming yeah. so again i had to ask you to intervene the road was not getting built there there you told me just build it and we will uh, reimburse you i said but government reimbursing a private <laughs> <laughs> he said no no everything is possible <laughs> so uh, lots of these but uh, the most touching uh, moment was that on uh, of course you were there for the foundation stone laying uh, but then you were there when the founding batch came uh, and the founding batch felt a very strong bond with you yeah. because you were here on july 1 2001 uh huh i am coming to the dinner boss <laughs> so sir then you actually hosted a dinner yeah uh, and the dinner was at uh, falak falak taj taj krishna taj krishna so there was a dinner at taj krishna and you personally went and met every student yeah. there was 128 of them in that first batch i remember that they were all stunned because you actually walked one by one one by one you know how the dignitaries yeah. meet the sports team sometimes when they are lined up <laughs> you know and i was like he has to eat dinner or what is he going to do and he actually said no i want to meet everyone do you guys remember that yeah. yes i'm not making up the, these stories no <laughs> <laughs> sorry you were sitting <laughs> yes he sat with all the students Yes, yes, yes. That was some of the nepotism at work on the other. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, <coughs> s- s- tremendous memories, sir. And one thing I do want to say, which is a slightly sad moment, but in your presence, I want to record this: that two of our founding board members uh, passed away in these last two years. One was Sri Yogi Deveshwar of ITC, who was on that trip. Yeah. at your home and the other was mr rahul bajaj yeah uh, and uh, it's uh, they made they were big fans of you yeah. and they would always uh, and, and of course itc has built a big presence here yeah what do you see sir as the future of the uh, the state of uh, andhra pradesh which you are so involved in and uh, you have always talked about Telangana being a role model for the rest of India I know that you have started doing some work on also making Andhra a role model for the rest of India how are you thinking about that you know all uh, sometimes some changes will come after bifurcation i prepared a vision for 2029 hmm. Telangana is having Hyderabad is having some advantages. One is climate advantage, and also at that time abundant land in Hyderabad. Andhra is having some more advantages. One is sea coast. On east coast, best ports are available in Andhra Pradesh. Second advantage, water, flat land. we can give every one acre irrigation that is possible third one andhra people because of telangana and andhra telugu people i promoted them even andhra people also very very enterprising either hyderabad or america everywhere they are doing extremely well and also i want to construct improved version of hyderabad that is amravati because in new city we can do better here it is only expansion or extension 
So all these things we have planned. First time in public policy, this is one issue where corporate governance or public governance, leaders make all the difference. Always. I strongly believe that. Either governance or public policies. 25 years back on public policy, I want to promote IT. Today, everywhere, Indians are there in IT. Even I was responsible at that time for bringing reforms in telecommunication sector. Nobody used to understand at the time. There was VSNL international calls, BSNL domestic calls, public limited companies. Lightning call, if you book, it will come after seven days or eight days. <laughs> Other countries are moving very fast about uh, smart cell, cell phones, wireless, everything, bandwidth, all these things. That is where I fought with uh, then uh, the Prime Minister, convinced him, Vajpayee I was the task force co-chair person. We have given report on the basis of that. Deregulation has come. Because of that, every person, if you see, even villages, they are using smartphones and recording everything and using cell phones. What I'm saying here, all these things we have planned in all the ways. Today, we are having a problem. Amravati is uh, development has stopped. I don't want to go much politics here. It is a business school. But at the same time, business school leaders have to understand how things are happening with the public policies and governance, public governance. If you give good company, I am seeing this also, I am analyzing. If you see one generation will start industry, sometimes same generation will spoil also. You have seen some of the case studies. Yes. One generation will start industry, second generation will spoil totally. That is second. First generation, third, second generation, third generation transi transition in uh, private businesses, it is very rare, only some companies. So the same thing in government I have seen, because of good governance 20 times uh, GSTP growth. In some governments, if you see seven times, five times, seven times, we are all one country, India. Same country, so much of variation of governance and public policies. Even companies, startup companies you are seeing, one startup company will do wonders. It is only an idea how to execute it all depends upon leadership. To st as on today, we are having some problem of the state. One simple question I'm telling you, after bifurcation, very difficult stage. I concentrate focus very much, 10.8% growth rate, first of its kind in India, after independence, five years, 10.8% growth is unique, nowhere it has been done in India. That is how we have done. Now, same growth rate has come to 3.5 or 3.2 percent. You can see the difference. These are all the things, but we are committed. We have to rebuild. We have to contribute. Not only giving vision for the nation or promoting, inspiring people. We have to contribute that state also. We will work in that direction. You are also participated at that time. Is a chairperson for bringing knowledge, education policy. No, sir, that was uh, the most amazing thing that uh, sir did is that not only did he invite me to chair the higher education committee, but the three, four of us who were in that committee, there was not a single person from the bureaucracy and there was no politician or minister to select the universities that would be given the license to operate in uh, Andhra Pradesh. 
this is unheard of and uh, sir when in the in the center uh, there was this new program the center started institution of eminence yes so they said how are these uh, how should we select i said there's an example yeah in andhra pradesh and they said but how can we do this i said but it was done there's a precedent of that and so when they set up the selection committee yeah. for this i used this example sir yeah where there was not for the institutions of eminence program of the government of india they actually did not put a senior officer yeah. or any politician it was a completely independent committee yeah and that lesson is from what you did uh, which i think was unprecedented most people would not trust people from the private sector to make such uh, unbiased choices yeah. some vested interest yeah. and so on. and there are a lot of people who objected yeah. of course there was a great uh, is officer who worked with us sumika yeah. daura but uh, but ultimately you are able to bring a uh, best uh, universities so you when you do SRM these things when yes sir sorry srm SRM or kriya or kriya slri yeah. or amrut all these things yes amrita university yes amrita sir. university all these things have come some more universities on the way we want to make andhra pradesh is a knowledge hub hyderabad also one is isb if you can go to triple it nalsar urdu university all these things we have brought at that time you know the contribution you have made to education i think has been seminal yeah sir i have a question for you which i think will benefit a lot of young people here you have also seen ups and downs in your career right and uh, you have gone through a lot in your political career you never give up and uh, you are always so positive uh, most of us do you go through times when you are sad or down or feel like you know it's hopeless and how do you build the resilience how do you have this courage this positivity is it just something that you have in you or do you inculcate that what message would you give to young people no in life if you see ups and downs will be there crisis will be there success will be there whenever there is a crisis a right solution you have to find move forward whenever you are successful also next step you have to move forward if you see hyderabad people may not remember me because 20 years they may not acknowledge but i am having satisfaction what i have done by seeing airport <laughs> by seeing outer ring road by seeing isb inch by inch around 80 times i inspected the city not one or two times 80 times morning by 5:36 in a bus i took all my officers across the city and give instructions again action taken report next visit i won't tell them when i am going to come they are all very very tension they used to do it this is where i am saying at the end of the day what we have done is important sometimes i am not expecting any return from anybody give back to the society that is our duty great country people gave me this opportunity to serve the state or country so many policies we are able to do one final example i am giving you andhra pradesh people gave me samay kya combined andhra pradesh 9 years as chief minister 10 years i served as opposition leader nobody can break that record even in the near future because state is divided to <laughs> possible to unite again some political statements some people will give irrational that i don't want to comment now better way again to develop what all you can do it either on the place or here also goodwill and continuously will build sir any closing thoughts beyond that because we are almost at time and i know that you are a very punctual person yeah uh no i am very happy the biggest challenge for all of us 
India will move forward. There is no doubt about it. Anybody is having any doubt, remove your mind. And at the same time, if we use our talents properly, we will uh, move very fast. There is unpotential growth. I used to say once, pre-economic reforms. Wherever we used to go, they used to kill us. India growth rate, Hindu growth rate. That means 2%, 3%. From there, after economic reforms, we are able to grow reasonably well. But there is a very possible to grow more. I am using that word, beginning of infinity. Even today, startup companies, same youth, just like you, they are creating or they are visualizing gap areas. They are providing leadership. They are bringing knowledge and technology and uberization and scaling. They are doing wonders. In this, I want to contribute a little bit. Here, Indukur Raju is here. In uh, Silicon Valley, we started, I asked them to start Falcon X. And also here, we started GFST, Global Forum for Sustainable Transformation. I wanted to create ecosystem for entrepreneurs. If you can go through back, when I was CM first time, I used to promote IT. At that time, only job work. From America, they used to spend all medical uh, transcripts, who used to type, and then send it to them again. Then I used to say always, it won't fetch for you, go for products. That has been developed for some people, it's okay. Then always I am asking, don't satisfy with job. Always don't uh, be job seekers. Go for job providers. Today I am very happy. In America, all Telugu people have started startup companies. First IT, wife and husband, one person used to work, one start business. If successful, then divert to business. <laughs> one company is successful, go for other company, what because they are starting. Now they are doing extremely well. Now I used to compare once Jewish. Every meeting I used to say, why inspiration? At that time, 60 lakh Jewish are outside. 60 lakhs Jewish are in Israel. Their per capita income, wealth is the highest globally. Now we are able to cross them in per capita income, not in wealth. <laughs> Another 25 years, we are going to cross Jewish in wealth also. It is going to happen. So what I'm saying here, all students are here. You have to involve in public policies. Don't disappoint that what all you are preparing, people may not accept, but continue your effort. And also corporate governance and innovative ideas, all these things we have to work. We are also inviting you anybody is interested to work with us as apprentice or contributor for GFST. I, I hear GFST concept is very clear. Knowledge in different parts, technology as a platform, be entrepreneur, and also leadership you have to provide, either commercial or um, society, what you call NGO and do something great work for the society. I want to create ecosystem, mentoring and um, investment, all these things. Raju is doing very well, seen Raju, as a private uh, investor. This is the ecosystem, what all possible, we want to contribute. There we need all our support. Again and again, I am requesting all of you, you are part and part, parcel of the society. Our duty is, you are all educated, you are earning reasonably well, 
that is the one aspect now you have to see those who are not having enough amenities or food shelter education those who are all below poverty that is your responsibility second angle keep it in mind all of you some countries have committed a mistake they didn't talk about population i am always when people want nobody used to talk about aids i gave a slogan at the time break silence talk about aids that was my slogan at the time even children parents has to mentor them guide them otherwise great risk all these thing today what china has done japan has done europe has done india should not commit same mistake we are having enough time every couple should have one boy one girl two child now <laughs> or otherwise after 25 years you will have a demographic disadvantage will start you may say you will be there to watch all these things i may not be there but society will be there i am very clear on that that is where i am promoting demographic management from now onwards then india will become global hub or supplier for the food grains to the global community always technology is there everything is there but to operate technology somebody should be there that will be the indians second angle manufacturing hub india will become manufacturing hub and finally back office for services hub from here you can work globally that is going to happen that is the trend of the today and tomorrow it will be more technology is emerging continuously we don't know to tomorrow what technology will come but all leaders wherever you are you have to adopt technology and become leaders in whatever field you like to contribute you can contribute so i am very happy in this uh, best leaders i wanted to measure your success rate in terms of entrepreneurial skills continuously even time sometimes our education is one it will give you some sensitivity but there is an urge among indians there is a fire all americans or british or some other countries there is a complacency because of complacency they are not able to do or perform well but indians are doing extremely well because of a fire in the belly so i am very happy i will witness every year in a way your dean and isb will publicize all your records everything but ultimately i want to see this isb should be top 3 just what you are once three ho gaya you lowered the bar sir you said top 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 3 in the name of first rankers oh, okay <laughs> not uh, top 3 means last 3 <laughs> then no need even some leader may come to make that also you should not allow that that is what i am expecting from you all thank you sir very very inspirational thank, thank you, you. thank you very much always i am saying Sorry. one thing i'm going to request everyone to settle down for a couple of minutes on thinking i am always younger than all of you uh i am always in thinking 20 years ahead all, all of you all of us has to work in that direction don't think today tomorrow day after tomorrow also you have to think long vision thank you thank you sir so i'm going to request two minutes uh, professor subbu who is our ed in uh, at the imf has a quick question to ask so i'm going to just yeah. subbu if you can be okay not a question sir i just want to take the opportunity uh, here uh, thank you sir on behalf, behalf of all the faculty even though i'm on leave i just want to express our sincere gratitude for you having created this institution sir so i think um, us faculty those of us who wanted to do research would not have been able to come to india but for you creating this institution 
and being able to actually grow our kids here in India uh, without minimizing any stakeholder. I can say our students would have definitely found other institutions. Staff would have possibly worked elsewhere. But those of us who wanted to do research and yet be in India would not have you know, had the opportunity but for what you created. So genuine gratitude on the behalf of all of us faculty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Subhu. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, no, at this time, I wanted to convey those who contributed for this institute directly and indirectly. Just now, he told the first dean has told very clearly so many litigations. At that time, I entrusted one of my additional advocate general. Recently he retired from CJ government of India, uh, CJ, chief uh, from Supreme Court. I know how they struggled from my court to Supreme Court. Apart from your advocates, sure. we used to engage our advocates and protecting all these things. Initial stage, we faced some hurdles. Ultimately, everybody acknowledged what we have done is right. I'm very happy. That is how progressive way we have gone. For all those, I'm thanking them for making this institute one of the best institutes now. Thank, thanks them, because this is the time I have to remind, remember their services. Thank you, sir. I, I do want to, I'm tempted to sort of use the opportunity that I'm, I'm holding the mic, so there's really no one going to stop me for a few more seconds at least. Uh, uh, Ajit Rangnekar, who was uh, then deputy dean when I joined ISB, one of the, I mean, there's many stories about you, sir, that we've all heard, uh, almost all of which are true. Uh, one of the things he would say was every year after the school was started that, you know, he and the dean would come and visit you and sort of give an update every six months. It's not so much about the update, uh, but I think what Ajit used to tell us, to a lot of us, uh, you know, as sort of lessons and leadership was, he said at the end of every meeting without fail, uh, Chandra Babu Naidu Garu would ask, end the meeting by saying, what else can I do for you? Yeah. I think that's a, a remarkable attitude uh, to have. <clears throat> uh, you know, I think, you know, you've yeah. inspired many people knowingly and unknowingly, sir. I just wanted to Even sort of... Even uh, I wanted to acknowledge Ajit also. He started 10K run in Hyderabad. <laughs> First of its kind in India, by Dean ISB, he started that credit goes to ISP, particularly Ajit Ji. Thank you, sir. Thank Very you. Nice. May I now invite uh, Dean Pilutla, G. Prasad and Shini Raju to please come up on stage and uh, present mementos to uh, Sri Chandra Babu Naidu Garu. <laughs> Sir, can you please, uh, I'm sorry, we're really running out of time. I understand, I understand the urge, but I'm just saying, let's uh, please proceed with the event. Hmm? Please, sir. For SNP rating, sir, when you sent the team for SNP rating, he's mm. talking about standard and poor, great. standard and poor ratings. Great. Yes, yes. Thank yes. you. Thank I, you, I think Thank you're you. making the job of the dean very difficult because he he was thinking he has a really tough board, but if I think he's thankful that Mr. Naidu is not on the board because he really has very high <laughs> sort of expectations. Uh, Madan, can I request you to please? Uh, Thank you very much for bringing that point out, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Prasad Shini, I'm going to request you to present a shawl to the. Uh, sir, put on. With the shawl. We'll present a shawl to Shri Chandbhav Nehru. I do want to thank everyone who's made this event a grand success, uh, you know, and also. So this is the ISB logo on it.
And also, uh, cheers to the Solstice organizing team uh, and a big gratitude to the ISB20 committee and the working groups as well. And thank you all for coming in. And to those of you who have joined us online, thank you very much.